Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome to Kingdom Life Ministries International Programs. We welcome you today, this Sunday, with joy. And God bless you as we study the Word of God today that prepares us to live right in this life and preparing us for the life to come. We believe there is a life to come, but there is a life to live now. And so we invite you to join us as we study the Word today. Today, um, I'm going to share a word that's not uh, very popular. That's not, you never hear that uh, being preached in our days in our television sets, in our radios, and so on. We're preaching other things, but I'm going to preach this because I believe as I was studying, I believe it was the Lord who said we must share this today. The title of my message today is Your Sin Will Find You Out. Your Sin Will Find You Out. I want to read a story from the Word of God. Because right now we are hearing other people preaching, bishops, apostles, evangelists, pastors, and so on. Some of them are preaching that, number one, there's nothing like that that your sin will find you out. Number two, they are saying now that you can sin as much as possible. You're not going to hell because Jesus died for our sins. Number three, they would say, well, there's no more judgment. You just do what you like because Jesus died for us. And, and, and some would say, no, no, don't worry. God is a God of grace. And because he's a God of grace, there's no problem. God cannot create fire for his people, eternal fire, and throw them in there. There's nothing like that because Jesus died for us. But I, I don't believe that because I don't see that in different Bibles that I have. I studied them. I've never seen that. I know that the Bible says your sin will find you out. I want to read you a story of this young man who lived a very careless life. Let's see what happened to him. And the Bible says, remember, God said not even one iota of his word will ever change. And Jesus said, the lake of fire was not made for humans. It was made for the devil and demon spirits or wicked or evil spirits. Not for men. He said, now he will tell people who will be on the left that go to the lake of fire, to the fire that was prepared for the devil and demon spirits or wicked spirits. Now this thing of saying there's no more hell, there's no lake of fire, I don't know where people get that from except that the, first, the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, it says in the last days the Holy Spirit speaks expressly that some people, some, some, some will depart from the faith. The faith, that is the heaven-going faith. They will depart from it. Verse 2 explains. He said they will follow doctrines of the devil. Teachings of the devil. Teachings of the devil. Teachings of the devil are always the opposite of what God says. So Jesus says when you don't live right, when you die, you go to the lake of fire. Somebody stands up and says, ah, you won't go there. That's exactly what the devil said in the Garden of Eden. If told that the serpent who was in the sep uh, 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 the devil who was in the serpent is another, the Lord God said, If we eat of that fruit, we shall surely die. And the devil answered and said, You shall not surely die. Now the devil has been opposing God's word from forever, trying to get making sure that what he says will lure people away from God to his own deceptive teachings and doctrines. Let's read the story of this young man. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation and read as fast as I can from verse 1 to the last one. The Bible says, chapter 21, When Jehoshaphat died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then his son Jehoram became the next king. Jehoram's brothers, the other sons of Jehoshaphat, were Azariah, Jael, Zechariah, Azariah, Michael, and Shephashiah. All these were the sons of Joseph, uh, Jehoshaphat's king of Judah. Their father had given each of them valuable gifts of silver and gold and costly items, and also some of Judah's fortified towns. However, he designated uh, Jehoram as the next king because he was his oldest, he was the firstborn. But when Jehoram had become solidly established as king, he killed all his brothers and some of the other leaders of Judah. Verse 5. 
Jehoram was 32 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years. But Jehoram followed the example of the kings of Israel and was as wicked as King Ahab, for he had married one of Ahab's daughters anyway. So Jehoram did, did, did what was evil in the Lord's sight, but the Lord did not want to destroy David's dynasty, for he had made a covenant with David and promised that his descendants would continue to rule, shining like a lamb forever. During Jehoram's reign, the Edomites revolted against Judah and crowned their own king. So Jehoram went out with his full army and all his chariots. The Edomites surrounded him and his chariot commanders, but he went out at night and attacked them under cover of darkness. Even so, Edom has been independent from Judah. So this day, until this day, the town of Libna also revolted about that same time. All this happened because Jehoram had abandoned the Lord and God of his ancestors. He had built this young man, Jehoram. He had built pagan shrines in the hill country of Judah and had led the people of Jerusalem and Judah, listen, to give themselves to pagan gods and to go astray. Now, if you read from the King James, the Bible says those in those shrines, it was not only to worship the pagan gods, but they were places of fornication, places of illicit sex, of, of people who wanted to, to have sex with the wrong people at the, on, on those shrines. Then Elijah the prophet wrote to Jehoram this letter. This is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David says. You have not followed the good example of your father Jehoshaphat or your, your, your grandfather King Asa of Judah. Instead, you have been as evil as the kings of Israel. You have led the people of Jerusalem and Judah to worship idols, just as King Ahab did in Israel. And you have killed your own brothers, men who were better than you. So now the Lord is about to strike you, to strike your people, number two, to strike your children, number three, to strike your wives, number four, and all that is yours with a heavy blow. You yourself, number five, will suffer with a severe intestinal disease that will get worse each day until your bowels come out of you. Then the Lord stirred up the Philistines and the Arabs who lived near the Ethiopians to attack Jehoram. They marched against Judah, broke down his, his defense, carried away everything of value in the royal palace, including the king's sons and his wives. Only his youngest son, Ahaziah, was spared. After all this, the Lord struck Jehoram with an incurable intestinal disease. The disease grew worse and worse, and at the end of two years, it caused his bowels to come out, and he died in agony. His people did not build a great funeral fire to honor him as they had done for other ancestors. Jehoram was 32 years old when he became king, and he reigned Jerusalem eight years. No one was sorry when he died. They buried him in the city of David, but not in the royal cemetery like the other ancestors. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible shows us that in Genesis that God was created to be a free moral agent. We are endowed, we are given this terrible, wonderful, yet terrible, and yet wonderful gift of choice. God allows us to live as we want to. And God, because of his grace, sometimes when we do wrong, he doesn't jump up and grab us and kill us. And because of that, people think God doesn't care. No matter what we do, no matter what we do, no matter what we do. But I'm here this morning to tell you that it matters what we do. Because God has already said, your sin will find you out. Now, because people sin and do whatever they want, and some of us we, who are preachers, we preach funny things on the pulpit, and nothing happens, and it looks like it's all right. It looks like it doesn't matter. Because of the grace of God, we just do what we like. Because of the grace of God, we just do what even things that we know God said we shouldn't do, and we do them anyway. And because God doesn't strike us with lightning, we think it doesn't matter. We think God approves of the wrongs that we do. But ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says your sin will find you out. Jehoram, his father Jehoshaphat, gave him the kingship because the Bible says he was the firstborn. And God, the Jehoshaphat, gave his younger brothers. He gave them 
gold and silver and fortified cities so that they can enjoy life whilst their eldest brother is the king i believe jehoshaphat thought that this young man this young man jehoram will take care of his younger brothers that he will bless them and he, he will keep them safe but the bible says when this young man had taken over his father's reign the bible says when he was solidly in control the first people he attacked were his own brothers the bible says he killed all his seven brothers not because they did anything but because the devil told him to kill them and nothing will happen and he killed them and the bible says he also killed some leaders i believe those he thought they were closer to his younger brothers maybe those he thought they would revolt and he killed them all and when they lay dead there i believe a funny gear funny weird smile came upon his face that i've killed them and nothing and nobody will do me nothing and the bible says when he had done all that god of grace this god of eternal love he, I believe in his heart, he said, Mwah. that's enough, boy. You have chosen to do wrong. You have chosen to do all the horrible things to my people. You have encouraged all the wrong things to my people. Now it's time that the, your sin finds you out. Ladies and gentlemen, when it is time your sin finds you out, there's nothing you can do. You cannot run fast enough. You cannot hide wherever. You cannot stop it. When your sin stands up to come to, to you to find you out, there's nothing you can do. You can't stop it. You can hide. You can run away fast enough. God went to his servant Elijah. Elijah! write a letter to this young man he has done all these things and i've been patient with him but write him that right god almighty the god of his father jehoshaphat says now boy this is time you reap what you have sown write him this that the very people that your father ruled who are outside jerusalem who are who are neighboring states they're gonna rise against you boy when you see your father reigning during his time that there were no wars and there were no troubles, it was because I, God, had gotten rid of the trouble they could have made against your father because he was my man. Your father was my man. He was a man of prayer and a man of faith. Ladies and gentlemen, read your Bible. You will enjoy reading the stories about Jehoshaphat, the king, a politician of faith in God. And so said write him a letter tell him that now those people around who were reigned over by your father are going to revolt against you number two they're going to take away all your sons they're going to take away your wives they're going to take away all your riches they're going to take away everything and the last thing that i'm going to do me jehovah god the god of love the god of grace i'm going to strike you with a disease an intestinal disease bowel disease you will have diarrhea boy that you will suffer from it until your very bowels come out ladies and gentlemen tell me what that is if it's not found by his sin i think when jehoram read the letter he laughed I maybe he might have sworn at the man of God, Elijah. I believe he must have loved and said, Elijah, you are sick in your head. Who can touch me? I am the untouchable. I've done this, nothing happened. I killed my brothers, nothing happened. I did this and nothing happened. I built shrines where people can go and commit fornication and nothing happened. What do you, you can scare me with your little piece of paper. But ladies and gentlemen, it was not just a scaring thing. The Bible says the Edomites were the first ones to revolt against him. They put on their own king because they were ruled by the, his father Jehoshaphat. And the people of the city of Libna also revolted. And the Bible said the Arabs also revolted. Until Jehoram was surrounded by enemies. And Jehoram didn't have enough soldier to fight all of them he tried to go and attack the edomite they conquered him he ran back home believing that god jehovah the fact the god of my father will protect us like you did to my father 
but he didn't realize that the choices of his father were positive and his choices were negative he didn't realize that his father feared god and he was living like a guy who never feared god and the bible says they came they took everything away i think he started to realize i was loving it a truth that i should have loved it i was scorning at the truth that i should have scorned i was i was acting like this nobody can do me nothing yes i was enjoying kingship and the the wealth and everything and women around me doing anything i wanted anytime i wanted but times have changed because i disobeyed god ladies and gentlemen your sin will find you out I want to remind you of that message that I preached 1992 and it rocked this area. It rocked the South Africa. It rocked the people outside the country that says your sin will find you out. And God today said I should remind you that it is still standing. It is the lie of the devil that you can sin as you please and nothing will happen. It is a lie that the devil says you can live as you please. Nothing will happen. That is not true. Jehoram. The Bible says when everything has been taken away from him, and the Bible said the enemies left only the, his, his last born, the youngest. Because God remembered, I promised David that uh, all your great, 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 great children, they will rule forever. The kingdom will not leave your house. Now because of that, I make the enemies at least to leave the last born alive. And when everything has been taken away, ladies and gentlemen, here came the last thing that really blew my mind. This young man, Jehoram, who thought nothing can, nothing can happen to him. Nobody can do anything to me. The Bible said the God of heaven, this good God, the father of Jesus, this good God of grace and mercy and eternal love. The Bible says God struck him with that bowel problem. And he thought it was ordinary diarrhea. I think some of his physicians came and gave him that. It will stop all king, long live. Tomorrow you will be fine. And he drank, I see him drinking stuff. In the morning nothing was right. And it went on. The Bible says for two years the man had diarrhea. I think when it started it was a big fat thing. Maybe with a big stomach and a, a big head and a big neck. With, with, with some, some Russian thing or some bourrevors on the other back of his back head. Because he, he was fat and uh, I mean he was enjoying it. But I think by this time on the second year. It was skin and bone. That powerful man with a roaring voice. He was now whispering. I see him unable to walk. I see him crawling on his knees. Because God had taken a stand. And say your sin will find you out. Boy for the many years you did what you liked. And I had grace and mercy upon you. But now boy it is time to reap what you sow. And Jehoram, Jehoram, that wonderful young man, that good looking, powerful, kingly looking guy, now he's skin and bone. He has got a non stopping diarrhea because God said, I'll hit you with it, I will strike you with a bowel disease that has no medication. No medication, nothing will help you, boy. I believe you don't want to come to that situation. I believe you don't want to come to that situation where you just live what you, what you like and do what you like in church. Maybe as a pastor, you just do what you like at your pulpit. Maybe you just preach what you like. You know what you're preaching may not be true, but you go ahead and preach it anyway, as long as it brings you what you want. And your members of the church of the, your members, your church members just do what they like because they were they are told God is a God of grace and nothing will happen if we sin. Jesus died for our sins. God is a God of love and mercy and, and grace. He will not do nothing. That's a lie of the devil. Read your Bible. Jesus says, I will tell the people among them I left and say, go to the eternal fire that was made for the devil and all his angels. Now this is Jesus. Now I want to ask you, who do you believe? The preachers? Or do you believe Jesus? 
Jesus says, I'll tell them, go to the lake of fire. Go to the, that eternal fire, which was made for the devil and its angel. Not for humans. But humans who want to go there, they are most welcome. Humans who want to accompany the devil to the lake of fire, God says, you're welcome. It's your choice. Your sin will find you out. My sin, if I sin, will find me out. There's nobody who is more important who can sin and their sin don't find them out when they're still alive. You got eyes on your head. Look around and look at those who sin, deliberately sin. Just do what they know is wrong and they go ahead and do it. Look at them before they die. You will see that they were found by their sins. Your sin will find out unless you run to the blood of Jesus unless you run to the blood of Jesus your sin cannot touch the blood of Jesus to run to the blood of Jesus I mean un unless you repent unless you run to God and ask God to forgive you and receive his son Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life only then will the sins you committed not find you sir only then will the sins you committed mama not find you young people the sins you commit will never find you if you run to god and into the blood of jesus but if not so you will remember this message you cannot laugh at god and laugh at the children of god and laugh at the pastors who cry and pray for your soul and you are laughing and laughing at them and laughing at serious committed Christians and you criticize them and you call them names and you think it will end there. It won't end there. It won't end there. The young man, Choram, when everything had come out of his stomach after two years, the Bible said his bowels came out. Ladies and gentlemen, can you see how frightening that is? When he thought he was just going to help himself, he saw actually bowels themselves coming out. And they came out and came out. I think he screamed in fear, but they kept on coming out until he dropped and died. And the Bible says nobody felt sorry for him. What a death! The Bible says nobody who knew what he was doing and how he was doing it and laughing at God. The Bible says nobody, nobody felt sorry for him. They said, yeah, got him. He died that horrible death and went to hell. Because when you die with your sins unforgiven, there's no other place you go to. You go to hell. And from hell, the book of Revelation says you go to the lake of fire. Where hell, this place called hell, the Bible says, will also be thrown into the lake of fire. You don't want to go there. I know you don't want to go there. But your sins will take you there. Until, unless you run to Jesus. And receive him as your Lord and Savior. And bow your knees to him. And ask him to come into your heart and forgive you. And wash your sins. Then you go to heaven. I want to pray. I know you don't want to go to hell. And if this is true with you, pray this prayer with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I come to you and I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me for all the sins I committed. Sometimes influenced by the devil, sometimes by all my own choice. Forgive me. I receive you as my Savior. Save me. Make me a new creature. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that short prayer, ladies and gentlemen, I advise you to get a good church where they preach the word of God. Not philosophy, psychology, politics, and other things. But where they preach the word. If you want, you can come to our church at Kingdom Life. We're just by the main road if you stay locally here at a place called Jiflana. And you can come. We'll take care of you and try our best to take you to heaven. God bless you. Hope to see you next Sunday. Please remember this. Sin will find you out. But if you run to Jesus, you are forgiven. Your sins that you committed will never touch you. God bless you. Bye-bye.